Good morning, everybody. Um, really good to, to see you all. Um, thank you for coming this morning. We, um, in one of our home groups this week, we were chatting um, through something from Ecclesiastes. And uh, one of the guys was uh, in his motor caravan in deepest, darkest Cornwall, quite close to um, uh, the Hanging Gardens of, what's that, the Lost Gardens of Pelican. Maybe you think it's the Hanging Gardens of Winston. But he shared a lovely photograph with us after, who we were wrestling with Ecclesiastes, which I know sometimes can be quite challenging to read. Um, and he sent this through afterwards. He said a beautiful photo, lots of different colours, which I can't share with you. But he just sent this verse, and it's Ecclesiastes 3.11. He has made everything beautiful in its time. He has also set eternity in the human heart. And particularly that, uh, the theme for today is prayer. And I think that sense of God putting eternity in our hearts is that real sense and desire that he has given us to want to pray and to talk with him. So, welcome everybody. Um, it's really, really good to, uh, to, to, to see you. Um, it's good to be sharing this together this morning. Um, we're going to start with a few notices, if we may. So the first one is um, around the Living in Love and Faith course. Now some of you may be aware that the Church of England has put together um, a short five-week course um, looking at the whole uh, aspects of um, uh, inclusiveness, um, gender, um, sexuality and all these sort of difficult things which are, have been quite challenging for us to talk about. Um, and, and what we want to do over the next sort of five weeks on a Monday evening is just to, to get together as a group, to spend some time in Bible study, uh, and then to have some discussion afterwards uh, around, these, uh, around these topics. So if you're interested in doing that, uh, it will be face to face, uh, it will be in the chapel, um, lasting about an hour and a quarter maximum sort of thing. Uh, and they will be starting from Monday the 31st of January. If anybody's interested, please drop me a, an email um, and, and, and or just contact me, let me know um, that you'd like to come along just so we can uh, have some sort of ideas of, of, of numbers. So that's for the next uh, five Mondays, starting not tomorrow, uh, but Monday the, uh, the 31st. The second notice, we have three notices today. So the second one is um, a little bit about um, confirmation. Um, some of you will be aware um, that in March, I think it is, we have a date now where uh, Bishop Nick and the Bishop of Plymouth will be coming to, um, to confirm those uh, who wish to be confirmed within the church. Um, old and young, I think the beauty of these um, ceremonies in the past has been the um, uh, eclectic group that's, that's come together uh, and also the range of people that have come together as well to, to, to make that commitment. We've got a, a short video um, to play, where um, Bishop Nick, I think, will far more eloquently than I will, explain a little bit about what confirmation is. Many people are baptised as babies and the godparents and parents make uh, vows about the Christian faith on their behalf. So traditionally, confirmation has been about the opportunity to say with our own lips, to confirm with our own lips, that we want to follow Jesus Christ. And it gives a con the uh, congregation itself the opportunity to uh, confirm that those who are candidates are with them, members of the body of Christ. But there's a bit more to it too, in that confirm means make strong. And so the prayer at the heart of a confirmation service is praying that God, by his Holy Spirit, would make strong the faith that is expressed by someone that day. So it's a great opportunity to stand up in public and say, yes, uh, I want to follow Jesus Christ. Uh, that's my choice. Well, it's for anybody who would like to feel confident to say that they want to follow Jesus. Uh, as I say, it's uh, 
for people who are baptized as babies. It's an opportunity for people to say for themselves. Traditionally, it's often been uh, teenagers, but increasingly I find as I go around as a bishop and take, well, quite a lot of confirmation services, more and more people are adults who have had time to reflect on what's really important and having experienced a great deal of the world, find that they're, that find in the Christian faith a, a reason uh, for living and a pattern of service that they want to embrace. So uh, it's wonderful to be confirming people from the age of eight uh, to the age of uh, 80. Uh, and often before a service, I'll try and just say to people, what is it that's brought you here to be confirmed today? And I hear all sorts of remarkable testimonies. Well, when we're baptized, we're baptized into the whole church of God. So whether it's a Methodist or Roman Catholic or whatever, we all recognize each other's baptisms. But as well as belonging to, if you like, the universal church, uh, we need to belong to a, a particular church, a particular uh, way of worshiping. It, it can't all just be uh, general. And so confirmation into the Church of England means that's where I find my spiritual home and uh, it, 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 it's it's a chance to to say look this is a church that I feel committed to where my discipleship is going to work itself out and as such uh, that's why uh, I want to be confirmed and to make this uh, public declaration of all that Jesus has done for me. So if anybody um, is interested in confirmation or knows anybody that might be interested in confirmation, uh, please let um, Andy Bay know uh, and he will organise that. They'll do some prep leading up to it as well, um, but, but if you are interested or know somebody that is, we'd be absolutely delighted to, to support you to be part of that service. Okay, and my third and final notice, um, Alison and David, would you come forward? Uh, some of you may know and recognise Alison and David, they've been worshipping with us for about six months or so now, uh, having watched us online first, um, trying to think if they'd watched me online, I probably wouldn't have come to see the real thing. Um, they're going to talk a little bit about some leaflets that they've left at the back and some work. Yeah, pick that one up, that'll be fine, switched on I think. Hey, good morning. Um, morning. Apologies, I think I should, probably should have taken my coat off. It's a bit rude standing here. We all stay in. But, uh, yeah, we're Alison and David Jude, and we, as I said, we've been coming here for a, a few months now. We're getting to know a few people, particularly from there upwards, but uh, well, hopefully we will get to know more of you as time goes on. For the last 12 and a half years, we have been working with Wycliffe Bible Translators, and the last 10 of those years, We've been serving in uh, Papua New Guinea, working with Papua New Guineans, with the Papua New Guinean Church, with international partners, bringing God's word to the tribes and the numerous languages there um, that don't have access to scripture in the language that they understand best. Um, that's probably enough for me for now. I'll just pass this over to Alison and she'll explain why we're standing here. Hello, good morning. Um... So, leading on from last week's service where we were thinking about the Bible and Andy was reminding us of the importance of the Bible in, in our Christian lives and how it helps us to grow, how we hear God's word speak to us, um, we, we found that we had um, a number of leaflets that were actually beginning to go out of date, so we thought we need to share these with people. Um, it might surprise you to know that um, there are approximately 1.5 billion people in the world who do not have the Bible in a language that speaks to them, a language that they understand the best. Um, and so we thought it would be a really good opportunity to share these leaflets they're free, please pick one up at the back. There are some stories about different translations that Wycliffe is working 
uh, on around the world. Um, and if you'd like to know more, come and talk to us. Um, I think that's all I need to say, really. Mm -hmm. There at the back. Thank you very much. So, yeah, I would encourage you on the way out just to pick up a leaflet and read through some of that work. Um, I'm just reminded of um, a trip to the Holy Land where um, our Father, we're going to talk a little bit about this um, later on, Paul's going to lead us this morning with a message, but the Our Father, the prayer that we know familiar, there's a chapel there um, with, as I've said before, the, the, the different languages around it. Uh, and it just made me think uh, about this thing about the Bible. We take it for granted. I mean, sometimes when we read the Bible, it's quite challenging for us. Imagine trying to read it in a language that's not your first language. So the work of um, uh, Wycliffe and the, the Bible translators is really, really important uh, for sharing God's word with people. Okay, so uh, thank you for that. That's the, uh, the, the, the notice is over. Hopefully in amongst that lot, um, there will be something that's um, prompted you to do something. Um, uh, as a result of it. So we'll begin with, um, with the liturgy as we do. Please feel free to, to join in with the, with the heavy type words, the bold words. Or be joyful in the Lord all the earth. Serve the Lord with gladness and be come before his presence with a song. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and bless his name. For the Lord is gracious, his love is everlasting, and his faithfulness endures from generation to generation. So we're now going to um, sing our first song together. Uh, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty. Um, we still have to keep our masks on. So, so please um, sing with all your hearts. Apparently when you wear your mask, it makes your voice sound really, really good. So feel free to sing out loud and the mask will adjust it. Okay, so please stand for our first song, thank you.
Thank you. Please sit down. Over the, um, the last couple of weeks, um, we've been looking at uh, Habits of Grace, and today the theme is prayer. And as I mentioned, Paul will uh, lead us in a message later um, specifically about that. But we do have a, um, a, a short video to, to share with you uh, uh, about prayer. Um, and it's a, sort of a conversation uh, be, between children. And, and I think it's a good way of just levelling out what prayer really is. Prayer is a conversation with God. And a conversation is just talking. That means prayer is just talking to God. And God loves having conversations. He wants to have a conversation with you all the time. The best part, you'll never interrupt God. He's not busy at work. He's not busy eating dinner. He's not busy editing his photos. He is always ready to have a conversation with you, always, anytime and anywhere, because you matter to God. So we are uh, going to pray together. It's uh, the prayer of confession. And it's about saying sorry to God for anything that's got in the way of our relationship with him. So please feel free to, uh, to join in the bold um, as it comes up. Uh, and this is the prayer and confession. God our Father, we come to you in sorrow for our sins for turning away from you and ignoring your will for our lives. Father, forgive us. Save us and help us. For behaving just as we wish without thinking of you. Father, forgive us. Save us and help us. For failing you by what we do and think and say. Father, forgive us. Save us and help us. For letting ourselves be drawn away from you by temptations in the world about us. Father, forgive us. Save us, and help us. For living as if we were ashamed to belong to your Son. Father, forgive us. Save us, and help us. May Almighty God have mercy on you, forgive you your sins, and bring you to everlasting life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. So the children and young people are now going to, um, to be leaving us. Um, just pray as they're collecting together. Heavenly Father, we thank you that we are truly a church family, from the oldest to the youngest. Uh, we, we, we pray, Lord, that as the young people and the children meet together, that they will be filled with the knowledge of your spirit, that, that your word will truly speak to them in a language that they understand. We give thanks for the helpers and the leaders and all those who helped prepare. Please be with them. And we ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Uh, one request I would have is, is at the end you remember to pick your children up again. So just as they are leaving, we will now move into our next worship song. Uh, which is um, to be in your presence. Uh, please stand.
Please be seated for our reading. The reading this morning is from Luke chapter 11, verses 1 to 13. Now one day Jesus was praying in a certain place. When he finished, one of his disciples said to him, Lord, teach us to pray, just as John, John taught his disciples. He said to them, when you pray, say, Father, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Give us each day our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, for we also forgive everyone who sins against us. And lead us not into temptation. Then Jesus said to them, Suppose you have a friend, and you go to him at midnight and say, Friend, lend me three loaves of bread. A friend of mine on a journey has just come to me, and I have no food to offer him. And suppose the one inside answers, Don't bother me. The door is already locked and my children and I are in bed. I can't get up and give you anything. I tell you, even though he will not get up and give you the bread because of friendship, yet because of your shameless audacity, he will surely get up and give you as much as you need. So I say to you, ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be opened to you. For everyone who asks, receives. The one who seeks, finds. And the one who knocks, the door will be opened. Which of your fathers, if your son asks for a fish, would give him a snake instead? Or if he asked for an egg, would give him a scorpion? If they, you then, though you are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Father in heaven give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him. This is the word of the Lord. Thank you. Thank you, Simon, for our reading. Am I? Maybe it's looking to see whether I've got any sound. Said. That's better. <laughs> Thank you. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. There's a story told about a Sunday school teacher who asked the little girl if she said her prayers every night. No, not every night, declared the girl, because some nights I don't want anything. According to a recent survey for Tear Fund, one in two adults in the UK pray. One fifty percent of the adults in the UK pray. Even among those who say that they're not religious, one in five say that they pray, suggesting that prayer is still very important to many people. Among those who pray, over half say that they're more likely to pray in a crisis as they say there are no agnostics in foxholes, <clears throat> but half agrees that God hears their prayers. The findings on prayer reveal a strong belief in the power of prayer to bring around positive change. Surveys also reveal that biblical Christians in the UK pray for an average of only five minutes a day. The figures for church leaders, Andy, aren't much higher. All right. <laughs> <laughs> church members are reported as often regarding their church congregational prayer meeting as least important and optional for their faith. So the question I want to ask today is, do we really understand the immense privilege that we have in praying to a God who loves to hear us? And do we understand the benefit and importance 
as God responds to those prayers. And if we do that, why aren't we growing in our prayer potential and filled with joy and confidence in our prayer life? Prayer is a huge subject to deal with. So today I wanted to keep things simple and approach the question in three parts, as every good Anglican preacher does. For us to take an honest look at, where, at our own prayer lives, and then to look at where we can, can be by taking a look at Jesus' teaching on prayer in our reading today, and then finally to look at practical ways in, of applying Jesus' teaching, turning intentions into habits, habits of grace. So two weeks ago, Andy, in, Andy Bowden introduced the Habits of Grace book and the subject itself, and he described the life of an, an experience of David in Psalm 27. He explained that habits are often the most effective means by which we can affect change in our own lives, much more effective than resolutions. Um, as, as most of us know too well, into January and resolutions cast aside, or willpower. David decided, desired to seek God's face more than anything else. And by cultivating these habits of grace, we can, like David, grow in our confidence in our relationship with the Lord through the trials and joys of life. Last week we looked at the first habit of itself, hearing the word of God through scripture, and next week we'll be looking at fellowship in the body of Christ. But this week it's prayer. And you might look at these three habits as a three-legged stool. Scripture, prayer, and fellowship. All are equally important, but without any one the stool tips over, and our channels of grace become blocked. You might be unsure about what prayer really is, and simply put, as it came across very well in the video earlier, it's having a conversation with God. It's a wonder of wonders that God has spoken in the scripture, but he also wants to hear it from us. David knew this and expressed it in many of the Psalms. In Psalm 145, David writes, the Lord is near to all who call on him, to all who call on him in truth. If you want a more technical description of prayer, uh, Andy Bowden reminded us uh, a few weeks ago of a question in the Westminster Confession about what is prayer. And the answer given is prayer is an offering up of our desires unto God for things agreeable to his will in the name of Christ with confession of our sins and thankful acknowledgement of his mercies. Sometimes we can remember this in the letters of the word acts. Adoration, confession, thanksgiving, and supplication. So prayer is definitely not just a shopping list, although we're confident that God listens and responds to our desires. At St Andrews and the Church of the Holy Spirit, we have plenty of opportunities to pray. Even putting to, uh, to one side our own private prayers and our worship services. We've got the central prayer meeting itself where we can dive deeper into some of the um, prayer support to our local um, community and our prayer partners and the church at large once a month. We have prayer ministry offered after the service where people who've been trained and are committed to that work can pray with um, others about concerns for themselves and for those who are close to them. We have the prayer chain, the, the, conf conf uh, the confidential prayer chain, where we can put forward prayers and the whole team will mobilize and, and commit to praying for that, that topic, that subject, something that's um, maybe life or death may be a crisis, or it may just be a difficult decision. We've got the morning prayer, which started during the pandemic and, and has been faithfully followed 
and on Wednesdays and Friday mornings we have a, a, a simple service of prayer. We've got those who are meeting regularly to pray for the school, pray for the chapel, and pray in our discipleship groups. If we were to take all this then and construct a scorecard or a report covering our own prayer life, how would it look? Where would we be on some of these axes? Do we pray occasionally or frequently? Do we pray when we're part, part of our services or do we pray freely in our own words? Are we more confident praying on our own or in groups? Are our prayers short or extended? When we have prayer time, is it a routine or is it exciting? Are our prayers spontaneous or do we record them and review them in a prayer diary or a journal or something like that? And are our prayers answered? Are they answered occasionally or all the time? Do we track when God answers our prayers? Do we say thanks? And when I pray, does God seem far away or is God with me? Am I walking with God? The key thing is that there's no right or wrong answer here. God loves all of our prayers and wants us to grow closer to him through prayer. If we're honest about our own prayer lives, we can be confident to look for opportunities where this growth can take place. This is where building habit can be so effective. And we'll look at some suggestions on how to do this later on. Exeter Diocese has put prayer right at the top of our mission statement, growing in prayer. And in explanation, um, the diocese says, we want to abide in Christ and live our lives close to God. This means taking risks as we become more honest with ourselves and more honest with God. Prayer opens up deep places within us to God's grace, which is why it's such a life-giving activity. Going deeper into prayer is essential if we're to witness to God's kingdom and grow into the people God is calling us to be. Moving on then, having looked at our own prayer life, we turn to Jesus' teaching. We see throughout scripture that the Jewish nation are a people of prayer. Jews prayed at least three times a day and would stop whatever they were doing and pray aloud wherever they were. We see throughout scripture, Jesus spent much time in prayer. Yet there was something about the way Jesus prayed that was different and caused his disciples to want to pray in the same way. They recognized that Jesus' relationship with his father through prayer was key to his fruitfulness in ministry and relationships. Thus it would be quite natural that his disciples came to Jesus and said, Lord, teach us to pray. And we have two accounts of Jesus' teaching on prayer. This one in Luke and a very similar one in Matthew. And it's in fact the one that uh, Matthew uh, recounted that forms our usual wording of the Lord's Prayer. We can break it down into six parts. And you'll forgive me for this, but it's a very uh, sort of business or um, management speak type diagram. Um, but it helps me anyway. The, there's six parts to the prayer, and there's three themes. And we can see that the, it starts with relationship, then moves on into our needs on a human level, and then moves into our spiritual needs. And for the observant amongst you, the final part, lead us not into temptation, comes from Matthew's version and not, it's not Luke. 
And Jesus gave this prayer as a model for his disciples and us to keep in mind as we pray. Taking each part in turn, the phrase, our Father in heaven, and, and Father is in the sense of Daddy, Abba, not a, an impersonal and distant Father, it's a close familial relationship there that Jesus is talking about. The phrase, our Father in heaven, indicates that God is not only majestic and holy, but also personal and loving. And the first line of the statement is a, a statement of praise and a commitment to hallow or honour God's holy name. Your kingdom come is a reference to God's spiritual reign in the past, established with Abraham, in the present, in Christ's reign, in believers' hearts, and in the future, when all evil is destroyed and God establishes a new heaven and a new earth. When we pray, your will be done, we're not resigning ourselves to fate, but praying that God's perfect purpose will be accomplished in this world as well as the next. And how does God accomplish his will on earth? He does it largely through will of people willing to obey him. This is the part of the prayer that allows us to offer ourselves as doers of God's will, asking him to guide, lead, and give us the means to accomplish his purposes. When we pray, give us today the food we need, we're acknowledging that God is our sustainer and provider. We shouldn't think that we provide for our own needs ourselves. We trust God daily to provide what he knows that we need. Matthew is quite emphatic that confessing our own sins goes alongside forgiving others and rights. But if you do not forgive others their sins, your Father will not forgive your sins. Something to ponder. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. Is a part of the prayer that we could discuss at length. All I'm going to say, I'm going to duck the issue here, and I'm going to say that we all face trials and temptation, and we are all involved in spiritual conflict. Sometimes it's so subtle that we don't even realise what's happening to us. We ask God to help us recognise temptation and to give us strength to grow through trials. Reinforcing this teaching, Jesus then provides a parable explaining the effectiveness of prayer and how we should be confident <clears throat> and full of faith as we pray. The impudence of the request and, and the obvious way in which the person who had, was tucked up in bed and with his door bolted could have said no, go and try somebody else, but he doesn't. And Jesus describes that relationship in prayer where no matter what we ask, God will respond and loves us and wants us to give, wants to give us good things. As the video put it so well, prayer is not really so complicated. And as an illustration, I wanted to mention Susanna Wesley. The health of Susanna Wesley was poor her marriage to a penniless preacher was deeply dysfunctional. She raised 19 children, of whom only 10 survived into adulthood. She had to cope with her husband being imprisoned twice and her house burning down twice as well. And yet her simple, honest, persevering prayers changed the world. When Susanna Wesley's husband, the rector of Epworth Parish Church, was imprisoned for financial mismanagement and his replacement failed to teach, preach the gospel, Susanna took matters into her own hands. She launched a Sunday school in her kitchen for her children. Others joined and very quickly she had 200 children in her Sunday school. And Susanna read sermons, sang psalms, prayed with them. How did she survive the loss of her children, the heartbreak of her marriage? How did she manage a busy household, a large Sunday school and the home education of her ten children? Susanna 
Wesley, the mother of Charles and John, was a woman of prayer. It was as she waited on the Lord each day that her strength was renewed again and again. There was nowhere at home to be by herself, so when Susanna wanted time with the Lord, she would pull her apron over her head, and the children knew that she was not to be disturbed. These were simple prayers whispered daily beneath that apron and could hardly have been answered more powerfully. So we come to part three of my message for you this morning, putting prayer into practice. If, if you've signed up for a copy of the book, um, you'll know all about this, um, because it's a very practical book. Um, if you haven't signed up yet, um, I'm, I'm sure we can get more copies. Uh, it seems a long um, and a, a fairly dense read, but it's not. And at its heart, it's trying to cultivate habits, habits of grace. How can we grow in prayer and go deeper? And there's lots of ways that we can do this. And the first, perhaps, is to use the Lord's Prayer as that model as Jesus taught. Or perhaps we might just use the Acts mnemonic. We might use a devotional guide as a prayer companion. Um, even this week I discovered that there's a, a one from the Church of England called Time to Pray that you can download on your phone. And it, um, you can either read through a service, a short service, or you can listen to it. It's got an audio file. Ever so easy. Um, but just something you can do daily. But there's plenty of devotional companions. Uh, and companions that use the Lord's Prayer uh, in that rotational, um, as prompts or as um, headings for our prayers. We can pray more often for shorter periods. We can use a journey or a walk or a ride, and I, I certainly pray on my cycle rides, not just for my own safety, but all sorts of things. Um, and you could consider praying out loud while you're doing that. Use a prayer diary or a calendar. We can go on prayer walks with others. Pray as families. Join our church family prayer times. But above all, we should be enjoying our time with the Lord, enjoying our prayers. And perhaps stepping outside what we feel comfortable with and doing something new. Establish it as a habit. And perhaps if for you, your prayer seems to be very routine. Perhaps you're listening this morning and feeling, I, I don't feel the Lord with me while I'm praying. Perhaps you feel you have to pray, but you don't feel your prayers are effective or answered or responded to. For you, I think the writer of the Hebrews has put it very well. Therefore, since we have a great high priest who has ascended into heaven, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold firmly to the faith we profess, for we do not have a high priest who is unable to emphasize, uh, em emphasize, em empathize with our weaknesses, but we have one who has been tempted in every way just as we are, Yet he did not sin. Let us then approach God's throne of grace with confidence, so that we may receive mercy and find grace to help us in our time of need. Jesus explained God so well to us. In his teaching of the Lord's Prayer, he reveals God to us, and he continues to do that in so many different ways as we receive him as Lord in our own lives and follow him. Not just in teaching about prayer, but in all aspects of our lives. And if for you, you want to receive him into your life, please, please do just pray a simple prayer and 
God will answer that prayer. You might also like to, to talk to somebody about it and explore it more. But God does want us to be absolutely confident and have joy in the fact that we can approach his throne of grace. I'm going to finish with a prayer that Susanna Wesley prayed and has been recorded. Help me, Lord, to remember that religion is not to be confined to the church or closet, nor exercised only in prayer and meditation, but that everywhere I am in your presence. So may every word and action have a moral content. May all the happenings of my life prove useful and beneficial to me. May all things instruct me and afford me an opportunity of exercising some virtue and daily learning and growing towards your likeness. Amen. Thank you, Paul. Uh, we will now have a uh, short worship session, so please feel free to stand um, and, and join in. Um, I think we've got a couple of songs beginning with What a Friend We Have in Jesus, so please stand.
Peter sits all kneeled uh, for our prayers. Look to the Lord and his strength. Seek his face always. Heavenly Father, we seek your face today. We give thanks that you, in your strength and in your power, love each one of us. You, the Creator, Heavenly Father, know each one of us by name. Lord Jesus, we thank you in our prayers and in our lives for what you have done for us, dying on the cross, carrying our burden so that we may be saved. And Holy Spirit, we call upon you when we cannot find the words to pray. When we cry out, we know that you inside us find those words for us. Help us to pray to the Father, through the Son, in the power of the Spirit. Heavenly Father, you, could de you encourage us to devote ourselves to prayer, being watchful and thankful. Heavenly Father, we pray that our leaders at a national level are watchful and thankful. And for those who know you, give them the power and the position and the opportunity to speak out to do what is right in your name, so that we may see justice and mercy for all. Mm. Heavenly Father, we give thanks for the church that we are part of. We give thanks for our bishops, Bishop Robert, Bishop Nick, Bishop Jackie. We give thanks for the leadership from Andy in this church. And we give thanks to all those who serve you in this church, Lord. Thank you that you have given each one of them serving heart. So many unseen, so many who do things so that we may come together as a body in fellowship and praise your name and pray to you. And we know that you hear us, whatever we ask. We know that what we have asked is of you. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the local community that we live in. We thank you for the relationships that we have. We thank you for the school. We pray for Sarah and the wider team. We thank you for village resources. We thank you for Mandy and the team at the pub. We thank you for all those who serve in our community, Lord. We thank you for the gift of the chapel, for the conversations that take place there, for the serving, for the food hub, for all those who are part of that, Lord. Heavenly Father, when people come, we know that uh, they come for food, and in your prayers, Jesus, you encourage us to ask for our daily bread. But we pray that each one that comes to that food hub has a different sort of sustenance, a sense of knowing that you will take care of them. The Lord is near to all who call on him, to all who call on him in truth. Heavenly Father, for each one of us as individuals, we will have trials and tribulations, and we will have things to give great, you great thanks for. Help us daily to rely on you in prayer. Help us to build that relationship with you, Father. Help us to be filled with your spirit. Let's call on you in Jesus' name, Lord, so that we build that relationship with you that our prayers are not mechanical, that our prayers are routine, but routine in a sense that we want to do them. Thank you, Lord, for the gift of prayer. Let us approach God's throne of grace with confidence so that we may receive mercy and find grace to help us in our time of need. Heavenly Father, we thank you that we come to you in Jesus' name that we do have the gift of grace. Help our prayers not to be a shopping list, 
but to begin with thanks and adoration for what you have done for us. Help us to be joyful in hope, patient in affliction, and faithful in prayer. And we ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. It seems appropriate now that we say together the prayer that um, Jesus has taught us. So as we bring our prayers to close, we say these words together. Our Father, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. When Paul gave his message this morning, he mentioned um, that there's prayer ministry, at the end of the service. Bronya? Bron Bronya um, coordinates um, this for us and, and, and leads other aspects of prayer as well. So I've just asked Bronya to come forward. Yes, please, yeah. So, so Bronya, if you could just explain perhaps a little bit about, we haven't rehearsed this. Bronya's going to say to me afterwards, why didn't you tell me beforehand you were going to ask me these questions? No, no, no. But please just give a little bit of background of, of what we're trying to, um, to, to encourage and achieve at the end of the service when we do this prayer yeah. um, Well, the prayer ministry, we've, we've had prayer ministry here um, at St Andrews for many, many years. It goes back donkey's years. And um, we have a team of highly trained prayer ministers and um, everything is held very confidentially. Um, nothing is too small for God. And over the years, did no one hear me? <laughs> and did, shall I go over that again? Start again at the beginning? Okay. <laughs> oh, great. I just lost Andy not hearing this. <laughs> right. Okay. So, over the years, um, we have a, a great team of, of prayer ministers. They're all highly trained. It's been going for years and years and years. And we have seen God move in people's lives in extraordinary ways. And to give God the glory, it's just amazing. So um, every it's during the COVID time, it sort of went quite flat. But now it, it is back on board. We've got the teams ready for prayer. And um, as I say, nothing is too small for the Lord. We see him work in, in every angle. And I think we have to remember that we are body, soul and spirit. And that God wants to heal every part of us it, and in body, soul and spirit. And we see that happening. Um, yeah, I think that's, that's that I've, I've sort of gone all sort of being up here. Yeah, I think that's it really. I mean, just to encourage you that nothing is too small. It's all confidential and we love to pray. We, it gives us great joy to pray with people and to see God move and to give him the glory for what he's doing because he is a great and awesome God and he loves his children to come to him. And we also recognise that sometimes it's not easy to pray for ourselves and that's when it's really important to, you know, and, and helpful to come to someone else and that we are a family and when someone in the body is hurting, we all hurt. So it's, you know, that we are, remember that, we are a family of God and we are interested in everyone's lives. So, yeah. Thank you. So if you feel it's appropriate for you, please come forward. At the end, it's, it's there every week. If there's something in the service that's just triggered a thought, um, something may have happened to you in the week, or something may be coming up in the next week. Um, and as Bronya said, that, that it's always in confidence, it's with people who have been trained um, and it's just very important that we all recognise that we are a fellowship and part of a wider body of, of Christ. So we now move on to our um, final hymn. Be thou my vision, O Lord of my heart, so please stand and we will sing together, uh, Be thou my vision.
spend this time together. Uh, it's been good to uh, worship together, to pray together, to sing together. And I'm sure that for each of us, there is um, something maybe that has spoken to us today. Maybe something that we didn't know, or maybe something that's a reassurance or an encouragement. Uh, and my encouragement for you is, is that at some point today, confirm that with the Lord in prayer. Make that one. So please um, celebrate the joy that we have in prayer. Celebrate the opportunity that we have to talk, to speak, to converse with the creator of all things uh, whenever we need to. And the blessing. Now the God who hears your cries and listens to your prayers, be the shelter above you and the tower around you and the rock beneath you this day, and all the days until Jesus comes again. Amen. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of your Christ. Amen. And don't forget to pick the children up afterwards. <laughs>